Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. This week we'll be going back to the 60s and looking at flower power, peace, love and things that get a little bit psychedelic. I've googled 60s flowers and you can see they're typically open and simple in shape, more like a daisy shape. So if we experiment, I'll just draw a basic flower. Then just play around with different kind of petal shapes that we can use when we're drawing our flowers. Once you've got a whole range of different shapes that you'd like to use, experiment with the centers. We can make them plain, put an aura around them, a spiral in the center, orbs around them, or even small petals. And then we can add some layers, add larger petals around those. We can even go around the entire flower and put an aura around it. We could segment the petals a little bit and leave spaces or have them overlapping and we can even put an aura within the center of these petals. So just have a play around. It doesn't have to be realistic. Use some long petals, short petals, put shapes inside the petals and you can see here I've created a, a card you could write peace or love in the center and then a variety of flowers in the background. On a square tile I've experimented with some themes you commonly see in the 60s. I used flux to create that paisley pattern, a peace sign in a flower, a variation of crescent moon for the trees and some diva dance for the river. You typically see rainbows and rays of sunshine and I've used arucas for this one. And now for something a little bit more psychedelic. I've chosen to use an opus tile for this. If you're not familiar with an opus tile, it's 10 by 10 inches square and I've already drawn a pencil border. You can see I'm doing random flowers and I did draw some stars in pencil which I then outlined with ink. So I'll continue drawing random flowers but I'm not completely filling the tile with them. Notice how I have a fair bit of space around each one. I'm happy with the amount of flowers that are on the page so now I'm going around with an aura. I'm drawing one aura around the stars and a second aura around each of the flowers. You can see here now I'm joining the star to a flower with a rainbow and I'll do the same with the other stars. I'm now going to start forming some shapes almost in a bunzo like fashion without the stripes. We do the same thing at the top of Zinger, sort of following the shape and then taking it into all kinds of different directions. They're almost like little grubs all nestling in around each other just a series of segmented worms. You can take these in all kinds of directions. Change the size a little bit. Go in one direction, come back on itself in places and just fill all the rest of that tile with these shapes.
to color this I'm going to use some watercolors. The ones I actually have are Winsor and Newton. When I colored my piece greetings card I used Copic markers but I don't have a variety of colors. I wanted this piece to be much brighter. For this little tile I used watercolour pencils but again I didn't have the variety of colours that I wanted to use on this psychedelic piece. I'm using a very high saturation of colour when I'm painting this, not what you'd typically use when you use watercolour paints. And I do intend to go over the whole thing later with Prismacolour pencils so I want it really bright and you can see it's very colorful but it's fairly flat so now I'm using my Prismacolor pencils I decided not to use Prismacolor pencils right in the very beginning because they do take a lot of time to build up the layers and I've kind of cheated a little bit by putting a background with the watercolors and now I can just enhance it with the Prismacolor pencils. They do go over watercolor fairly well and I'm only having to use one or two layers. Once I'm happy with the amount of shading I have on there I'm using a darkest version of each color to go over the outlines that I originally drew in ink. I won't film the whole process but here are a few progress shots. I hope you had fun with that. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. If you'd like to become a member of my Facebook group and share your work, there is a link below this video. And until next week, stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel or click on the links on the screen. There's a couple of examples there. And while you're there, click on that subscribe button.